In the last video, we saw that the methoxy group and alkoxy groups more broadly have different inductive and resonance effects depending on the position of the substituent and the nature of the group itself. Halogens are also famous for this. They're great with drawn groups inductively, but donating by resonance. And when you're just looking at a molecule on a piece of paper, it is very difficult, in fact, arguably impossible to quantitatively judge whether a group is going to be withdrawing or donating in a given situation. We saw examples like the meta-substituted methoxy benzoate in the last video where they're pulling in opposite directions. And as human beings, as mere human beings, we cannot determine quantitatively whether the group's going to be withdrawing or, or donating. As scientists, what we do in that situation is we try to think of a way to measure whether the group is donating or withdrawing. And in thinking about how we might do that, we're going to come to an answer in the course of, of this video. Where we're going to start is with a very simple reaction, arguably the simplest organic reaction we could think of um, to begin exploring this, and that is proton transfer, or a Bronsted acid base process. By definition, in any Bronsted acid-base process, the Bronsted acid is accepting electrons. More broadly, we could say that the Bronsted acid is acting as an electrophile or a Lewis acid at the same time, right? And so, for example, in this model reaction right here, we can see that the benzoic acid right here is accepting electrons, and it does so as it gives up a proton to water. Curved arrows make this clear. Right, so these curved arrows lead to these products on the right. The conjugate base has greater electron density than the starting benzoic acid and all that good stuff. And the nice thing about proton transfer, in addition to it being a very simple reaction, is that it's entirely equilibrium driven. And so measuring Ka's is, is very easy. We have the apparatus, for example, pH sensors, to measure a Ka value very simply, very easy. The experimental setup is robust, cheap, simple. We can do it for a huge variety of substituted benzoic acids, and there are a myriad of ways to make these, right? Substituted benzoic acids, we'll actually talk about this, how to make these a variety of different ways with a huge number of different R groups attached to the aromatic ring. So this is a fantastic model reaction for exploring whether this R group is electron donating or withdrawing. Now, how can we actually do this? How do we actually do this operationally? Well, the key idea is to understand that whether R is donating or withdrawing will have a profound effect on the value of the acidity constant. And actually, before I advance the slide, I want you to pause and think about this. Imagine we started with benzoic acid, where R was just an H, and we replaced that R with an electron withdrawing group, cyano, a carbonyl, a nitro, a sulfonyl, pick your favorite electron withdrawing group. What do you think would be the effect on the Ka value? Would it go up? Would this compound be more acidic with an electron withdrawing group right here? Or would it go down? Would the compound be less acidic with an electron withdrawing group right here? Pause the video and think about this for a couple of minutes before moving on. Now let's look at some data and let's think about these substituted benzoic acids, starting with one that's relatively electron rich, this paramethoxy substituted benzoic acid. Its conjugate base, of course, is the benzoate. You're seeing that drawn here on the right-hand side underneath the kind of the general structure. Actually, we've, we've already seen that the effect of the methoxy group in a para position primarily is to donate electron density via resonance to the ortho and para positions. And we previously noted that the electron density here and the electron density in the carboxylate group are sort of in conflict, right? There's electron-electron repulsion there. That's going to suggest that this substrate with the electron donating group is destabilized relative to, say, benzoic acid where R is just H. Because the conjugate base is destabilized, what this means is that Ka for the benzoic acid where the R group is equal to methoxy will be smaller than Ka for the substrate in which the R group is simply hydrogen. Replacing hydrogen with an electron donating group is going to lower the Ka value, make the starting benzoic acid less acidic, make the conjugate base less stable. These are all ways of saying the same thing. The acidity will go down due to the electron donating group. 
And we can relate this back to the idea that the Bronsted acid accepts electrons, and what we talked about in the last video. When a substrate accepts electrons, an electron donating group is going to make it worse at doing that. I often think of a currency analogy here, right? If I'm supposed to be accepting money, and I've already got a lot of money in the bank, I'm going to be less willing to do so. Please don't give me that gift. I'm already rich. I'm already electron rich. I don't need more electrons. And so Ka for the methoxy substituted benzoic acid is lower than Ka for simple benzoic acid. Now, what about the cyano group? Well, cyano is electron withdrawing, and we know from the theory of electron withdrawing groups and their resonance effects that the cyano group is going to withdraw electron density from the benzene ring, particularly at the ortho and para positions. And notice that this withdrawal has made the carbon linked to the carboxylate relatively electron poor. Now there's a complementarity between the negative charge in the carboxylate group and the partial positive charge, or at least lower electron density, at this carbon that's linked to that carboxylate group. This results in a stabilizing effect. The negative charge of the carboxylate is actually stabilized by the cyano group. Now I should note, and we'll come back to this later, that we cannot actually delocalize the negative charge onto the cyano group. The carboxylate and cyano are what's called cross-conjugated. However, there is still a stabilizing effect due to the resonance pull of that cyano group. And if we need to, we can go back to the acidity constants and the data to confirm this. And so bottom line is that when this is an electron withdrawing group, we see the opposite situation. The conjugate base is now more stable. The starting benzoic acid is now more acidic. And quantitatively, the Ka value for the relatively electron-poor benzoic acid, we might say, the cyano-substituted benzoic acid, is now greater than Ka for benzoic acid itself, where R equals H. And so really quickly before we leave this slide, let's just generalize the conclusion, right? Because this is going to generalize to absolutely any donating or withdrawing group. In fact, this is one way to define a group as electron donating, right? An electron donating group, by definition, is going to decrease the Ka value of a para-substituted benzoic acid like this. And equivalently, we can define an electron withdrawing group as any group that increases the Ka of benzoic acid when substituted in a para position. And again, here we're using R equals H as kind of our standard for increasing or decreasing so that H is neither electron donating nor withdrawing. It makes sense to put H at the middle of the scale since it's kind of unsubstituted. And these Ka values are measured. And so the last important point to make is that this entire idea of identifying a group as donating or withdrawing is really grounded in the measurement of the Ka values. What we noted in the last slide was that we could relate the Ka really back to the stability of this carboxylate anion, right? The R group is going to either stabilize it by delocalizing some of that negative charge or destabilize it by donating electron density and causing electron-electron repulsion and, and all that good stuff. And in talking and thinking about stability, what we're really thinking about here is free energy, the delta G or standard delta G for the process. And so that effect on Ka is really rooted in a change in the standard free energy, the delta G for proton transfer. This is where free energy comes into the equation, and this is why linear free energy relationships are called linear free energy relationships, since the relationship is really rooted in equivalent changes or conceptually equivalent changes in the delta G value as we change the substituent from hydrogen to a donating group to a stronger donating group, etc. And just to remind ourselves of a little bit of the theory here, keep in mind that delta G and K are related logarithmically or exponentially, depending on how you think about this. A, an equation that uses the base 10 logarithm is delta G is negative 2.303 times the ideal gas constant times the temperature in Kelvin times the logarithm base 10 of Ka. The equation itself is not so important. What it helps us realize is that if we think about delta G for benzoic acid, and delta G for the reaction where we've replaced that H with an R group in the para position, there's some difference in the delta Gs. That difference in the delta Gs is directly proportional to the logarithm of the ratio of the Ka values. 
And to derive this equation, all we did was we took this for R is a hydrogen, and we took the equation for R is some R group, let's just call it R, and we subtracted one equation from the other to get this difference. Subtracting the logarithms means we could throw one of the k's inside the logarithm and set up a ratio, kar over kah, and the negative 2.303 rt is just this factor out front in both of those equations. So I won't go through that derivation, but it's worth writing out and thinking through on your own. Conceptually, how we think about this logarithm of the ratio of the equilibrium constants term? Well, if R is a donating group and there's a destabilizing effect on the conjugate base, that means that the delta G for the R group will be less negative, more positive, let's say, than delta G for benzoic acid, meaning the Ka will decrease, meaning this logarithm will be negative. On the other hand, if R is a stabilizing group, a, an electron withdrawing group that is stabilizing the conjugate base, this ratio will be greater than one, Ka for R will be greater than Ka for H, and this logarithm will be positive. So this logarithm of a ratio is a measure of the destabilizing effect or stabilizing effect of the R group, depending on whether it turns out negative or positive. This logarithm of the ratio of the equilibrium constants is exactly what we call a Hammett substituent parameter. It captures in a very human-friendly form the impact of a substituent in terms of stabilizing or destabilizing an intermediate in some reaction. And here that reaction is the acid dissociation or the deprotonation, keep it simple, of a para-substituted benzoic acid. That specific parameter for that specific reaction is called sigma p. It's actually only one of several different types of sigma parameters, as we'll see in a future video. And just to kind of really nail down what a Hammett parameter is, is telling us, we'll look at examples in a future video, but just kind of qualitatively at this point, let's think about substituting R with an electron donating group there, say a methoxy or a dimethylamino. Again, pick your favorite uh, electron donating group. That's going to decrease the acidity of the starting benzoic acid. That will decrease the Ka value. This Ka for R will be smaller than the Ka for benzoic acid itself. Ka for the, say, paramethoxy or paradimethylamino will be smaller than the Ka for benzoic acid. And so the sigma parameter, the Hammett substituent constant, will be less than zero. This, again, is one way we can define it empirically, right, experimentally using these measured Ka values, what an electron donating group is. On the other side of the coin, if we imagine R being an electron withdrawing group, well, that withdrawing group is going to stabilize the conjugate base, make the starting benzoic acid more acidic, make Ka for the para, say, cyanocarbonyl substituted benzoic acid greater than the Ka for benzoic acid itself. That's going to make sigma p greater than zero. And this, again, is one way to define an electron withdrawing group. Any group that makes sigma p greater than zero is electron withdrawing. And of course, at the center of this scale is benzoic acid itself and hydrogen as the substituent. And by definition, based on the way we've set this up with hydrogen as our standard, sigma p for the hydrogen substituent is zero, and hydrogen, we will, will say, is neither donating nor withdrawing. 